what an incredible day um, that, that uh, little Superman had for us. I had to, I can't call him the Smurf anymore. He's risen to a new level. He's Superman now. Every day I go with the same preparation, the same routine that I've had since I was a little kid playing football. Um, and you know, and some games are better than others. And tonight it went our way. He's a testament to hard work, determination, plus talent. That's definitely my number one moment in my entire life. And welcome back into the Tiger Kickoff Show presented by the Columbia Missourian. I'm your host, Harrison Vapnik from KMU8 Sports, joined alongside the fantastic beat writers of the Mizzou football team, Wendell Shepard, Adam Ryerson, and Brandon Haynes. A very happy Monday here in Columbia after a pretty good weekend. How are you doing, guys? Doing pretty good. Feeling good. It was a good game. Fun to watch. Good's an yeah. understatement. Yeah. Yeah, Brandon. <laughs> One of the most dominant games we've seen from Mizzou in a long time, so feeling pretty well. I think that was probably the single best game day experience that I personally have had. I don't know if you can feel the same. At least, maybe not even this season, but in four years here in Missouri, from start to finish, just how the day went. Yeah, I, it, I was very surprised, pleasantly surprised, like how full the save still was at the end. Because yeah. Mizzou's fan base typically is like kind of late arriving, and like once the game's kind of the outcome settled, people start heading out, but it was still pretty full. It was a really cool environment to the last whistle. Yeah, I mean, everybody there saw one of, if not the best, running back performance they'll ever see in their life. So, yeah. I mean, that, that was just pretty spectacular and definitely one to remember. Yeah, I was going to say, obviously, just speaking on Cody Schrader, just his ability to, to kind of continue to just pound the rock, but also just be so such an influential player for this team was something cool to see. Yeah, you mentioned something cool to see. We saw something that no one had ever seen in SEC history before Saturday. Cody Schrader over 100 yards receiving, over 200 yards on the ground. He touched the ball 40 times. It feels like we were watching Army or Navy Mizzou just keep giving the ball <laughs> to their running back and Cody Schrader doing the rest. A career performance for him. It feels like this game from Cody was a long time coming. We all know his story. Division II transfer wanted to come to Mizzou out of high school. Didn't get that opportunity. Goes to Truman State. Comes here last year. Decent, but now really took on the full starting role this year and has played spectacular. Might be in a conversation for first team all SEC, especially at the running back spot. Was this Saturday just an accumulation of you know, a six-year-long career of what Cody's been able to do in college football? I think so, yeah. I mean, I saw a lot of people after the game posting like, his highlights from Truman State, and he's been doing this his entire career. He's just like now is on a bigger stage, especially with Mizzou, I mean, being as good as they are this year. And he's a, he's a big part of that. But it, I think it's really cool, you know, that people are finally, you know, take, taking him seriously and, you know, showing him a lot of respect for what he's done. Adam, if you look, you look at Cody, it doesn't have maybe the build of an NFL running back or someone you'd think is one of the best running backs in all of college football. But the way he just runs the ball so hard and is able to find the gaps, especially in the, in the running lanes, how does he get so successful with a guy of his size to be able to tear apart a defense like Tennessee? Yeah, it's, we talked about it like before the show. He doesn't have the 40 time or the insane metrics that you would expect to see out of a dominant SEC running back. But the one thing that we've talked about all year is that he always just finds to break one big run a game. And we joke that it's usually in the fourth quarter. The game's not really over, but it's kind of what ices the game once he gets his big run. But it seemed like every single drive, Cody Schrader was just able to get a big run. And I think the one thing that he has that really gives him the advantage over teams like Tennessee or really anybody that he plays is he is as healthy and runs as fast as he does on the first snap as he, compared to the last. Like, he does not lose a step throughout the game. And when you're playing four quarters of football and this guy's touching the ball 40 times, as a defense, you're going to get tired. And that's when he really makes you pay for not being in the shape that he's been in and that he got himself in over the last six years. And that's a credit to Mizzou's strength and conditioning teams getting the running backs in that kind of shape. And Cody, we know he drink with talk about it after the game. One of the hardest workers he's ever seen coaching. He's always in the weight room, always training, always trying to get better. And I think we saw that on Saturday. In the 36-7 win, Brandon, what did Missouri expose with Tennessee, who has the best rushing defense in the, all the SEC, had their worst game of the year. Missouri ran all over them, led by Schrader, also some Brady Cook. How did the Tigers get able to expose Volunteers' defense? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things, and we kind of talked about in the show last week, was the time of possession. And with Schrader, Mizzou was kind of just able to take complete control of that. Uh, they had that 10-minute drive there between the first and second quarter. They kind of set the tone for what they were going to do. It allowed Schrader to kind of get a little bit of a rhythm going, and when he got his rhythm going, he was going the, the rest of the game. So obviously, once you kind of establish that, then you control the tone. The defense especially stepped up, held Tennessee less than two minutes per drive. Just 
when you gain that that tempo when you have a running back like Schrader who will be consistent throughout every carry it just helps a, an offense that kind of needs to piece together consistent performances and I think that kind of showed yeah, and then I think the other big part of the other half of that 36-7 win was the defense. And I feel like in that first six games of the year, we were kind of a little critical of the defense. A lot of points given up to Vanderbilt. LSU scored 49 against them. Even Kansas State moved ball at will pretty much. Feels like the last four games, they've really turned a corner going into this home stretch. South Carolina, I don't think they gave up a touchdown at all. Kentucky after the first quarter, not much. Even Georgia. Georgia scored 30 points, but a couple short fields. Missouri had two interceptions. Even 30 points against Georgia. We saw it, Ole Miss did them this week. Georgia scored 50 points in that game. And I thought Saturday, by far, their best game of the year. Seven points to a high-powered Tennessee offense. What was the key to success, Wendell, for Mizzou? I think both on the offensive side of the ball and defense, they were winning in the trenches, especially, I mean, I, I want to talk about that as far as like Schrader's success. The offensive line was completely dominant. Defensive yeah. line was the same way. Um, Darius Robinson was talking after after the game about how Blake Baker was showing so many different different defensive fronts, three, four, five, and just keeping them off balance. And every guy was able to win their battle, and they were just living in the backfield. Um, and they held Tennessee to their lowest rushing total all season. Um, I think it, it, it started up front, and then you had guys on the back end that were really good in coverage kept them from really getting into a rhythm in the passing game. We talk about coverage. We talked on Wednesday's show last week how Joe Milton likes to put the ball in harm's way a lot. He did have an unbelievable touchdown to Dante Thornton in that second quarter. But after that, I think Missouri's secondary really adjusted. There was a couple of near interceptions. And then Dalen Carnell able to jump the route perfectly in the fourth quarter and take it for a pick six. What adjustments did they make after that first couple of drives when Tennessee was moving the ball well? And then they started forcing turnovers and eventually the touchdown. I think it really started with the line of scrimmage. Just being able to get pressure on Joe Milton and then forcing him to make those mistakes. Like you said, we talked about it on the show. That was going to be the key. But you mentioned over the last four games something changed in this defense. And I really think it was the fact that like the safeties and the other defensive backs not named Chris Abrams Drain and Ennis Rakeshaw really stepped up because that's where they were really getting hurt in the beginning of the year. But J.C. Carlisle comes away with a fumble recovery after a weird fumble from Milton. It kind of he threw the it ball and hit the he hit the helmet. Of it his was the first back. strip sack ever by a running back on his own quarterback. <laughs> is the way I described exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, so he but he's stepped up and he's been playing really well th throughout the four courses that Mizzou's defense has been dominant. Um, and then you mentioned Dalen Carnell also has been doing a very, very good job. And then Joseph Charleston has been one of, if not the hardest hitter on this Missouri yeah. defense. I swear that it looks like he's almost taking somebody's helmet off at least once a game. So I think those three really have come into their own as they've gotten settled in this season. And it's really helped Missouri's defense get to that next level that we predicted them to be at at the beginning of the year. What's next for this defense, Brandon? Because we're, we're, we're sitting at, what, set, eight, eight and two with two games left, a chance for 10 and two. We'll talk on Wednesday show about possibly college football playoff, New Year's Six spot. Two games against Arkansas and Florida. Teams that, if you look on paper, don't have a great defense, or great mm -hmm. offense in the conference, I should say. But how can they keep their foot on the gas and really pick up the momentum from last week? I think it's just building off the positives that you had, the takeaways, and just the ability to kind of impact the quarterback. Florida, they have a strong passing game. That's what you'll see from Graham Mertz. And we'll kind of talk about it on Wednesday's show. But they center their offense around the pass. Obviously, it's different than what Tennessee did. So you just got to adapt to the differences in offensive styles that those two teams have. But kind of like we've talked about, uh, I wrote down a stat, four touchdowns last 15 quarters allowed by the defense. And that's just something that at the beginning of the season you saw them at, at times struggle against South Dakota and Middle Tennessee. And it, it's just something that's kind of come around now as, as the season has progressed. And so I just think they need to continue to keep up the consistency, keep up the effort. Blake Baker just has an ability to scheme the right things at the right times, it seems. And I think if they just rally behind Baker, then they'll kind of be in a perfect spot. Any quick thoughts on Brady Cook's performance that, yes, on Saturday? They didn't ask him to do a ton. It looked like he got banged up at some point in that third quarter. He seemed to be all right after that. Um, but just quick thoughts on how Brady Cook played. I think, you know, you hit the nail on the head. He didn't, wasn't asked to do a ton. He, he executed what he was supposed to execute. He had that early interception. Really bounced back from the field. Yeah, really did bounce back quickly. Um, I think that's something that fans are probably, you know, enjoying to see. Because he, his earlier picks this season, he usually followed up with another interception later in the game. Um, but I, I think he, he definitely got banged up. You saw after the game, like, there were bruises on his hands, cuts on his yeah. arms and stuff. So he definitely got got hit, but he's a tough guy, and I think he'll bounce back. Adam? I think that one thing that Brady Cook showed that he does is he doesn't try to do too much. And I feel like against Georgia, that first interception, I, you got to go back and watch the tape. I wasn't, I'm not Brady Cook. I wasn't in his head. I don't really know exactly what happened on it. But the second one, it was a deep ball. Game was kind of sealed, but 
It just seemed like he was trying to do too much, and he could have done that again after throwing that interception on the opening drive, but he didn't. He stayed in his own, and he kind of let Cody Schrader dominate that game. And there's a lot of other quarterbacks that might want to try to do more and try to be that focal point of the offense and bounce back and prove I can do it too, like I can still do it. I just made a mistake, give me another chance. But he didn't have to do that because of Cody Schrader playing so well. But I think that really shows that he's he's a good leader and he doesn't care if it's him making the big plays or if it's somebody else on the offense. He just wants to win games. And I think that's something that you need for Mizzou going forward. What were your thoughts on that, Brandon? I just thought, especially with his legs, you, you saw again his ability to impact the, the game and just Mizzou's play style. And I think that opened up opportunities for Schrader. And when they did go down the field, I feel like it helped with that. One thing with Brady, though, I think we still need to, to talk about is the sliding. Uh, <laughs> obviously, at he times... He loves to fight for those extra yards. And I think at times, obviously, as we've seen, it kind of puts him in harm's way. And I just think that's something that, as, as the season goes along, you need to kind of continue to look at and continue to put a focus on because we saw him get banged up, and we've seen that time and time again this season. And it's a lot of times been on those scrambles. So just kind of knowing your awareness of where you are in the play and knowing that maybe the one extra yard ain't worth like hurting yourself um, I think it's something that that's worth speaking but obviously his legs are such a weapon when he gets going and if Mizzou has that along with Cody Schrader's running ability I mean this offense on top of the weapons that they have a receiver is just one that's going to be so hard to stop as we wrap up this part of the show I kind of want to talk about something that was happening off the field and it's kind of the Eli Drinkwitz Blake Baker equation of this they did not forget the 66 to 24 last year loss against Tennessee, where Tennessee kind of ran up the score at the end. They were still throwing the ball deep with Joe Milton in. They were still trying to score with like 10 seconds left inside the five-yard line. Blake Baker posting the image up on X or Twitter, whatever we call it now, of the Jordan. It was it the Jordan shrug or was him at the last dance, you know, saying I took it personal. Drinkwitz icing the kicker <laughs> with 30 seconds left. I don't know why Tennessee was kicking a field goal down 29 at that point in the game, but the ice team, he missed it. The crowd celebration, I thought, was one of the coolest parts of the game. Just what are our thoughts on you know, the coaching staff's kind of reaction to you know, this little rivalry with Tennessee, who they don't play next year, which is kind of unfortunate. I loved it. I mean, I, I think that, that competitiveness, that hunger is what you want to see out of you know, your team at every level. I, was, like, I think the coaches, players after the game, they all you know, had that energy. Like, we, we really wanted to you know, beat them. This, this was personal. And I think that energy is something good to carry with you, Um, especially as good as as good as they're playing. You don't want to get complacent. They still remember, you know, people sliding them in the past, and that's you know is is good motivation. And people still continue to slide them. Adam, what are your thoughts? I think that it's like Wendell said. I think it's awesome. Uh, And if you're going to do what Tennessee did, and you're going to try to kick that field goal to uh, to end the game, you don't have to kick that field goal. You can knee it out. The game's over. If you're going to match that with the same energy and ice the kick and make the make them put pressure on Tennessee to make that kick if they really want to make it and they miss it, I think it was just kind of poetic. I thought it was I thought it was really cool. Um, I really liked to see it, and, and it was petty, but you have to appreciate the pettiness of it, in my opinion. Brandon, do you think this gives a little more swagger to the Mizzou program? Like you're looking not just at the Missouri side of it, but all around college football, they see you know Missouri, you know having this little beef with Tennessee, beating them by 29 points, talking trash after. Like, how does that make Mizzou look in the national light? I think it adds a little bit of swagger to them. Um, Mizzou's a program that you've kind of heard about if you're in the national spotlight, but you haven't really seen too much of them and just their swagger and their tenacity. But I think that paired with kind of how Schrader performed really get put them more on a national stage in terms of just people having eyes on the team, knowing what this team's about, and kind of just national recognition. We've talked about how Mizzou has sometimes been sliding, slided with the CFP rankings, the AP rankings, stuff like that, but people finally got to see a little bit about what Mizzou's about and kind of what that toughness and grittiness and resiliency is that that is there kind of is about and what the program is speaking about. So I think it definitely put them on more of a national spotlight for the teams just around the country. We'll now turn to our moment of the game, our video brought to you by KMU8 Sports. We're breaking down our three best plays from the game, starting off with a guy we've talked about a lot this afternoon, Cody Schrader, in a huge run in the first half to really add three points on the scoreboard, Brandon. Yeah, Cody Schrader takes the inside handoff, works outside, kind of using his elite ball vision to just get in the open field and for 35 yards. I think the biggest thing here was obviously sometimes teams will take a knee right there just to get into halftime, but Missouri showed, and Schrader in particular, showed the ability to kind of extend the field, get in the field goal range, and add three points. And I think that really helped just with the momentum of the game and kind of carrying an extra added presence into halftime, especially with Tennessee getting the ball out of the break. And that celebration at the Tennessee bench, the 
uh, pointing at them. Let's go to our second play. This is a Luther Burden touchdown. Adam Ryerson, what happened here? Yeah, we've talked about how Luther Burden has been an effective decoy all season. Uh, but when Cody Schrader is gone for already over 300 yards against you, he's, he does a pretty good job himself. Uh, they bring Luther Burden behind the play-action handoff to Schrader, every single player in the Tennessee box bit. There was not a single player As who looked have, at they considering yeah. the way they were running the ball in that second Exactly. Half. So they forgot about a certain five-star receiver coming out of the backfield. And Brady Cook, easy pass, easy catch. And like Drink told Wendell after the game, he looks pretty fast on I that I think one. Luther Burden always looks fast, especially on this touchdown. Let's go to our last one. The best play for the defense all year. Their first pick six of the year by Dalen Carnell. Yeah, this was just the cherry on top of a great all-around game. Uh, jumps the route there from Milton. Looks at the looks at Milton as he's running into the end zone and goes and celebrates with the fans. Really, just really cool play. This was just a, a, electric to see, to see and to be there in the stadium. Um, great play from Carnell, who, who came close several times before to, get, yeah. to getting a pick in this game. Finally got one. Jeremy and if we see one more time, like, it looks like Milton was telegraphing that slant. They ran that slant all game long. They Carnell did. kind of telegraphs it the whole way, jumps the route, and Missouri defense, their first pick six since the New Mexico State game last year comes at a great moment to seal the 36-7 win. I think it was also, the Carnell. also Carnell. Yeah, yeah Carnell against the, uh, the Aggies last year. You know? yeah. Maybe he'll score one more in the next couple weeks later this season. We'll be back later this week on the Tiger Kickoff Show to start to preview Missouri and Florida next Saturday over at Faro Field and look deeper into that matchup. I'm Harrison Vapnik. This has been the Tiger Kickoff Show. We'll see you later.